Black for me is a uniform. I do activist work. I do a lot of work that puts me in the center of attention and black is a reminder that this work actually isn't about me. And I just love the fact that I can put anything together in seconds because everything matches with everything else. So I can throw everything I need in one little carry-on or in a backpack and I'm ready to go. I got asked up until I was about 18, 19, are you a boy or a girl? Almost everywhere that I went. The question was so invasive, but when I did the work, I realized I'm not offended by the question. I'm offended by the fact that you all are trying to put me into a box. You're telling me that I should be one or the other. I kind of like the fact that I was both. I have a twin sister and she was very feminine and very traditionally beautiful. My sister had the good hair and my hair was harder to manage. So I grew up feeling like I was ugly. My body wasn't traditionally feminine. I had a lot of muscles. I had a flat chest. You're seeing all these other things like identities mirrored back at you that are the ideals of beauty. And so I had a choice to make around that time. And I thought, okay, I'm going to see if I feel good trying out this whole idea of beautiful woman. And I tried, you know, I, I had this huge afro for a while, wore very traditional femme clothing. I definitely wore bras at the time, which is hilarious. There's nothing to hold. And I was just fetishized so much. And I felt like people weren't actually looking at me or seeing me in a particular way. This wasn't something that I wanted to fight for. You know, when you present that way, you, you fight for the gender that you want to present as. When I walked into that boxing club for the first time, the only women's boxing club in Canada at that time, it felt like all the outcasts uh, were there, all the pariahs in society, really the lifeblood of society. The dykes and the butches and the survivors and trans women and trans men and queers and everyone just had created this beautiful home and seeing all those people be who they were, it gave me permission to be who I was, even though I didn't know who exactly that was yet. And it was really an invitation to me to give something new a shot. And I cut my hair off and I tried the, the button downs and the trousers and it was the closest that I felt to who I was. When I finally learned a language to make sense of what I've always felt inside, what I was always presenting as was this, this non-binary, which is to live in the liminal, to live in the in-between, being comfortable with making other people uncomfortable. My gender identity is a place of movement and momentum. I definitely decided that I was gonna wear something that was a little bit flattering because I've been training very hard and I just had a fight on Sunday and I did very well. I had to match the aesthetic with the gloves that won me the fight. That is what being non-binary is. It's being so subversive and, and in a way it's almost understated. It can be really loud or understated. So um, I felt like this was, this really captured the way that I feel about style and the way that I feel about gender in one step. Inside out. I love a high waist jean. For a while, high waisted jeans were considered super like femme. And now we're sort of changing and subverting what's, what's possible just around pants and trousers, and I love that. My nickname is Future because I'm a futurist and I'm always thinking about what world we're trying to create and what belief system we want to create around it. But I also love the idea of futurism as an aesthetic. And this jacket can be worn so many different ways. I love that it can open from top and bottom. I love that it can completely reshape it. These represent future and past while being firmly rooted in the present. And you'll see the same sort of theme with the Sankofa bird. The Sankofa bird uh, is moving forward, looking in the past and nurturing the egg, which is the future. And then there's this panther that I have on my foot. So I'm always remembering to be strong as I move forward. Queer, like anything else, is a spectrum. Everybody's a little bit of everything. I feel very in tune with my masculine energy. And when I see a cute dude on the street, I'm like, am I more gay or less now? You know what I'm saying? Like, who knows? We are nuanced. We are growing, evolving beings. And our understandings of each other and how we shape our societies should also be evolving and expanding beyond binaries. They just are not big enough for the seven billion people that exist on this planet. How boring would it be if there were just two types of people, male and female, and one sexuality? That would be the most boring society that I could imagine. I believe that we all deserve to live in a world where our strength is not determined by how much oppression we can endure. I believe that we should be trying to build a world where we are building strength through our relationships to other people, through our commitment to other people, as well as our commitment to ourselves. This is about the four directions, northeast, southwest, and then there's center point. 
And while I think it's so important to remember at this point, there's all these other stories and all these other people and all the ways that they're connected, no matter what direction we're moving in. We are constantly in story with each other and in conversation with each other, even when we're not. Every time a penguin takes a step, all the other penguins have to shuffle with it in order to survive so that the penguins on the inside are warm and the penguins on the outside are cold and they're gradually moving. And that's what care looks like. That's what community looks like. That's what thriving looks like. My wildest dream would be organizing our societies not based on hierarchies, but based on spirals, based on care and community, based on knowing each other and knowing what each of us needs to, to get through. I think it's time for those on the margins to really shine.